I just really loved all the sex stuff with Aaron, you know. I loved all the mini skirts and the and the hair and the sort of going for it stuff. I found that really liberating. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Hi Dad! G'day, g'day. Sorry I'm late, I have to pick up some stuff. I don't know what you two have got planned, but he is extremely excited. Oh, well, you know, private men's business. Alright. Come on, Dad. He's so beautiful to work with. He's so sort of charming and he's like some beautiful exotic bird or something, he's got that lovely mouth. Yeah, I found him really um, very warm and, and yeah, and um, sad. You know, he's like a sad clown. I, I found it really sad. And I always found Rosie had, you know, could run rings around him and I, I would say he really needs to um, not have Rosie in his life, you know. I thought it was really good for him to, you know, go on his own way and I thought Aaron really brought that up, out really well without commenting on it. What's he done to you? <sighs> Licorice. How could you, Richard? You know what it does to his bowels, but still you do it. I like David Caesar's episode. I thought they were really well written. I thought the directors had really hit their stride by then, you know, and everything fitted in. It was really funny. And, um, and I think Andrew was very keen to make it basically a funny series with moments of depth and pathos and... and um, and I think that those of the two, those two episodes did that well. Where are your three kids? <sighs> Gallivanting somewhere. Candace has got the details. She brought up our lot. Scarcely bothered me. Still don't. David sees his brilliant comic, um, it seems like a brilliant comic director. You know, he could really get the jokes really well and he had a great timing. He wasn't a big talker either. He just sort of let it run and he really pushed the comic element, which I enjoyed a lot. When? It really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The point is, I want to be honest with you. So Honest? Get... Now you want to be honest? What about before? What about all the times you made me feel like a prick for neglecting you? You did. That is why it happened. Don't you fucking dare blame me! Steve Jodrell was much more interested in the, um, dynamics of the marriage breakup and the pain and the a anger of it, particularly in the character of Rosie. I think he was really, um, rather make her sort of, um, you know, mope about. He was really keen to sort of bring out this sort of anger at, I've lived 13 years of my life or 10 years of my life with this guy and what have I done with it and why are we doing this and why aren't we living the life that we should be, you know, which I found a sort of an interesting um, interpretation of that um, sort of inner life. Oh, look, I am. Um... <sighs> all this time, I thought that all I had to do was just grovel enough and smell my guts and I'd get you back. <laughs> it's hilarious because, um, if I look at you now, I don't know why I ever fucking wanted you. Well, we started off with Tony Tills and, um, who, you know, he was so great. He just sort of allowed anything to happen, you know, but he's great strength is um, visually, you know, he's really, he tells a story, you know, like a true director should, just with images and, and, and the dialogue sort of just runs in and you sort of read it, you know, he would often put in little scenes that weren't even written in the, um, in the scripts, you know, that just told a whole lot. There's one scene where um, I'm taking photos of white goods and he put in this beautiful shot of just this tracking shot and it sort of slightly slowed down of me setting up the camera and then there's all these white goods and I'm just in this huge hall of white goods and it just said so much about what was going on in my head as far as the character and he didn't really discuss why he took that shot. In fact, he didn't really know himself but he knew it was right and I think when, when you see it in the, in the actual scene, it, it just picks up the whole, um, the whole sort of inner in a, car in a world that, that Rosie's going on, and he did that quite a lot, and I really thought it was fantastic. And it's not something that you can necessarily discuss because it's not about verbal ideas, it's about some sort of intuition. Good on you, Louis, give him hell!
Where are you at the moment? Oh, sipping Pernod and ice at some sidewalk cafe in Paris. Hey.